say Russian Empire, if Russia would really disappear, the European Union would expand its borders. It would cover part of what the original Russian Empire was worth of money. So, there are three kinds of hell. Uh, I'm going to write it here just for a summary. You can read the you see it. You have a copy of this outline. This is not mine, but maybe I could put some addition here. Uh, this is just for reference. Um, it comes from three Greek words in the New Testament. That's Hades. Uh, Gehina. Uh, remember we talked about this uh, last time, uh, just in passing. Hades, Gehina, and Tartarus. So let me give the straight uh, explanation of each. This in Hebrew was written in the Bible as Shion. Now, when you read from the King James, it doesn't distinguish Hades, Gain, and Tartarus. It only says hell. But in the original manuscript, it came from three words. These three words, uh, Hades, Gain, and Tartarus, talks of different things. Gehina, uh, sorry, Hades is the spirit world. And this is what the prophet mentions as the fifth dimension. Take note, this dimension is different from the dimension of the of heaven and the presence of God. But this is a dimension that is higher above than our own dimension right now. It is not somewhere you imagine that is deep in the earth. Now, Hades can sometimes be interpreted as grave. But so, that's on the physical side. Grave in Hebrew, I think, is Keber. It's different from Shol. Shol, Job would mention, Thou will not leave my soul, ah, it's in Psalms, David's song. Thou will not leave my soul in Shol. If his soul was in Shol, it's not the physical body itself, but the spirit. The Shol is a dimension. It's not necessarily at the center of the earth. It could be just beside you. Could also be in your flesh. Uh, when Christ quoted, uh, "The gates of Hades shall not prevail upon the church, but upon the rock." The gates of Hades okay, uh, is somewhere that could deceive the church. Okay, it's just in our midst. It encompasses. It could be in the center of the earth. It could be here. It could also be in the lake of fire, the future. Now let's talk about Gehenna. Take note: Hades is a dimension. This is not a location. Tartarus is the, is the location. Please open up Matthew chapter 12, verse 14. This is the center of the earth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 14. And the center of the earth is also, there's a term in the Bible called the abyss. The bottom of the spit. have the same root meaning. These are Greek terms. Uh, of course, the uh, Greek uh, mythology uses this term, but when the five uh, ministers of God came to use the Greek language to preach the gospel, they would use the same word, like Logos. They would, they would you borrow from the Greek language to show to people uh, what they were saying. Gehida is not from the Greek comes from the Hebrew. But of course, it's transliteration from the Greek, which I have to write the Bible. Gehino, the valley of Hino. And this is what I said last week, not last month. Uh, where they threw the babies, sacrificial babies, to the fire. Okay? Uh, 
okay? There's a refuse or a big uh, dump of garbage there. And the fire is not quenched because there's methane. The worm died not because there's always something to eat. Now, Gehenna is what I could distinguish from what Christ would describe them as a condition of torment. It's a condition of torment. So, let's distinguish the three of them. Um, Hades is the dimension, the state of your existence. Gehenna is the condition of torment. Okay? The opposite of it, of course, is the. Uh, what Abraham said to Lazarus, he is comforted. Lazarus is comforted. You are now tormented. And Tartarus is the location, the place. The, this word comes from Second Peter, I forget the verse, 2.42. Maybe you can check it out. It says one time in the Bible. Uh, in Second Peter, Tartarus, Second Peter 2.4. Okay. Second Peter 2.4. Uh, you can read there the angels were chained in eternal darkness because why? Waiting for the day of their uh, punishment. Now, in Luke chapter 16, when the rich man and Lazarus died, they were both in Hades. But the rich man had was suffering in flames of fire. The rich man was in the formation of torment. Lazarus was being comforted, but they were both in in this dimension. They were both in Tartarus. This is the location, but they're in the state of a higher dimension. It's their spirit, not their bodies. If you're trying to dig up the earth, you're not going to see any persons there. Just lava. They're in the spirit realm, in another dimension. Dimension of but they're also being, uh, shall we say, in prison in the center of the earth. Now, Brother Bradham preached about uh, no, the torment. There's no literal fire right now, only in the lake of fire. Brother Bradham is very similar to from this article that I got from uh, uh, the others. For in the real torment of the hit, that will be in the lake of fire. Well, I don't deny that. I'm going to share something more. It's not just the lake of fire. In the lake of fire, you will have your bodies restored to you. So your torment will include your body. But in the center of the earth, right now, and in the Hades dimension, for those who are dead in Christ, let's say they never accepted Christ in their lives, they are in torment. They're, what kind of torment? The same kind of torment that does not include your body. It is your conscience where the world dies not. There is a physical fire, uh, there is a spiritual fire and spiritual water tied to the Holy Ghost. God is a consuming fire, of course, that will eventually be like a fire, that will eventually be in the fire in the tribulation in Armageddon. But God's spirit is also a consuming fire. Right now we are alive, if we feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, it is that kind of fire convicting us. So you read the scriptures pertaining to Gehenna. Everyone shall be sold and sold and everyone shall be sold in fire. And it that suffered in Mark 9, 49 or 45, where it said that every person that will be convicted here will have the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now, we speak of the fire of the Holy Ghost in Pentecostalism as though you feel the presence of God. Yes. But that is fire of passion. But I'm talking about this gives you hunger and thirst for righteousness. And if you are still alive right now and you felt that hunger and thirst, we will go to the water. Christ said, come unto me all ye that are a thirst. And drink. if you drink of this water, you will never be thirsty again. Take note in the parable here, of Lazarus and uh, Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus was asking for a dip of, in the water. 
by the finger of Lazarus. A small uh, trickle of water. Because just what does that water represent is the Holy Ghost. But what does the flame of fire that the, uh, why, uh, the rich man was experiencing? It's also the Holy Ghost. But then he lost the chance to drink it while he was still alive. So he was to suffer that for several years until he would be resurrected again to be judged and avoid from judgment. So the, the rich man was suffering inside Hades, but his suffering was what we call Gehenna. Here in the Bible, it's translated hellfire. Look at the in the computer, hellfire. That is Gehenna. And that has something to do with the condition. This kind of hell is a dimensional uh, world. Okay, here in Hades, let me describe something. When Christ died, he went to the spiritual prison, down in hell, Tartarus, he had his dimension, he preached to the spirits in prison. Now, Robert Hub has a message about that, souls in prison. And he also gave a title, even while we are alive. Even while we are alive, our souls to be in prison. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Even while we are alive, this body of grave, if we have not opened up to God, we are, have not yet resurrected spiritually to God. We are not yet made alive unto God. Our souls are still in prison in this place. Oh, I'm talking of this figuratively, symbolically, that our body represents the grave, because this is the body of death, and our spirits are, are captive inside this body. And when Christ preached the word, He said He preached the spirit of liberty. I preached uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, 2, 3, uh, to bring deliverance to the captives. And his word set the captives free. By the knowledge revelation, we are set free. And in relation to that, when Christ said, I will build my church upon the rock, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail upon it. The gates of Hades is this. Uh, by the way, let me describe this. What is in Hades? Uh, when we talk about Hades, Brother Peter talked about another dimension, the fourth dimension about science. It's like this. We see people alive today walking, but they are spiritually dead. They are not yet suffering like the rich man, but they are in Hades. So, this world that does not know God is in Hades. And the gates of Hades that will not prevail upon the church is this deception. Because when the church is built upon the rock of revelation, it is a sure foundation of what they believe. The deception will come in the teachings, in the beliefs, in the doctrines, in the attitudes. It's not in the kind of uh, church building you have, that come from other persons. But particularly in the word. So that's where Hades will try to swallow every uh, church believer, every church, global church. When Christ said, the church will not, uh, the gates of Hades will not prevail upon the church. It goes to show there is a dimension of Hades even in our presence right now. As uh, Barbara uh, preached about 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, he Christ preached to the spirits in prison. Christ went down to Tartarus. Christ went down to the middle of the earth, uh, center of the earth. He preached to two kinds of people. And he rose up from the grave. He, along with him, resurrected the Old Testament saints. And he's, he led captivity captive. It's also a time right now when we preach to people that are in prison right now. In our flesh. In their flesh. In their bodies. So, uh, the time right now while you're still alive and even after you're dead. The same thing about the rich man. The rich man was very concerned with his, their, his brother upon earth. He asked uh, for Abraham to let Lazarus resurrect from the dead to preach to his brothers so that they will not come to that place. Okay, so you see these three uh, aspects of hell. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Let's open up, sorry, starting from verse uh, 15 downwards. 
And you can see Hades are the sea giving up the dead. And you can read uh, death and Hades being thrown from the lake of fire. Hades is being thrown into the lake of fire. What does that mean? Those who existed in this dimension, then who would they be? Those were the dead. No longer the righteous, because the righteous would have been resurrected in the first, first resurrection. But the wicked, the wicked angels and wicked men, unrepentant men, they would have been delivered up from their grave. When they have been resurrected, they would be judged, they would be thrown the lake of fire. And that's when Hades, the dimension, those who existed in that dimension, will be thrown in the lake of fire. Now, does Gehenna exist only in the lake of fire? As I said to Arola, it existed right now after you die in the spirit realm. It's also the fire of God. So, but you don't have your bodies. What you have is your conscience. You could not rest, you could not sleep, but you don't have your bodies. But during the time when you are resurrected for your great white judgment, you are from the lake of fire. Then you will have your bodies. It's like swimming in the, in the lava. Okay. So what about Tartarus? This is the center of the earth, right? The earth will be made perfect and be cleansed. The earth will be cleansed of all iniquities. The center of the earth will be made empty. So when Christ preached to the spiritual prison, those who are dead are not walking those who are alive. There are two kinds of people then. The saved and the unsaved. The just and the unjust. The just receive the word from Christ as a confirmation of what they believe. They heard about it. The seed of the woman, they heard about the promised seed from Abraham, of David, the king that would come. They held on to that promise. They were waiting for that Christ to come. There were those who rejected even Judas himself. There were those who were on this other side, and they heard a preaching of Christ too. And when they heard the preaching, it just was a preaching of a condemnation. The word that he preached, if you rejected them, it would not, it will be the same word that will condemn you in the same way. Same the lake of great white throne judgment because you have rejected his word, it will be uh, reminded to you what you have heard and what you have rejected. The same thing with the Old Testament saints and the Old Testament wicked people here. And the Old Testament saints got resurrected and the wicked people were left behind. Now, in the fifth seal, what dimension were they there? The fifth. They're different from the resurrected saints, the Old Testament saints. They were crying under the altar. They were crying for justice. And these souls under the altar are waiting for their brethren to be killed as they were. It's a type or parallel of the Christians. Many of our brethren have fallen asleep in the previous years. For this some 2,000 years. And these fallen brethren, what Christ says is they're just sleeping in the grave. As Christ described last, he was just sleeping. Samuel, when he was called by the witch of Endor, he was disturbed. He was resting. He, he had an imagination what a believer would feel after they die. Job said in his flesh he will see God because he believed in the resurrection. And David uh, made this song, which was also alluded to Christ, you will not leave my soul in hell. Christ had the scripture that said he was saved. How was he saved? Not in the flesh, because he was re because he was resurrected. That's our true salvation, is to be resurrected. So the souls, in, uh, sorry, the souls under the altar is similar to our prayers today uh, in parallelism. Or in our brethren right now are not in their physical glorified bodies, resurrected bodies. Their souls, of course, not in the center of the earth, but they're in the presence of God. But they're under the altar. You see, not under the altar. They could not get into heaven itself. They're not conscious as into heaven itself. One example was Paul in First Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter twelve. When Paul died uh, for the moment, uh, he saw heaven. And when he saw heaven, uh, he could not make out things very clear. But he, he knew it was very wonderful place to be. So, 
And when Paul described them, it is what I, I would say. You are still the fifth dimension. You have that. It will be the sixth dimension where you will have your bodies. You will be very conscious. Everything will be very lucid. Okay? Of course, seven, that will be God himself. And this will be the paradise of God. This will be hell. And this condition is a place where in the spirit world as though you exist but you don't know God. I'm going to give an example. You believe there are many spirits in the spirit world. Amen? Amen. You believe? Amen. Okay. In the spirit realm, there are what they, we have white dwarfs and black dwarfs, are good spirits, bad spirits. It deceives the people to think that the spirit world as though consists of this, although God does not exist. That's the, set, the deception. We have in our provinces uh, uh, folk tales by our our uh, old people that uh, they are enchanted kingdoms. They're another world within, even within a tree. And sometimes one of those spirits would like to bury and bring it to them. Now, this is the world I'm talking about, where it lies the deception. Uh, what, what you see in Harry Potter and Mary all these movies. This is a world where in God does not exist as how they portray it to be. So, in the world that we live right now, that's what we need. Okay, that's what we If you see a condition where in the world are enjoying their life as though God does not exist in their lives, it's the same thing the spirit realm. And how they manifest to the people is a deception. A deception. What you can hold on to is the word that you have while you're still alive, when you can hear it. Okay? When the gates of Hades shall not prevail upon the church, it is a condition wherein the church will lose touch to God, and you will lose touch to God's revelation. And there are people trying to worship God in their, their own religious ritualistic way, or not, not by the progressive word of God. So, you get resurrected, you come out from this Hades revelation. Okay, so in summary, these are the three, uh, three aspects of hell. What was written in the Bible as hell? Okay, so there must have that.